if you're looking to master a new soccer skill. In this video, I'll show you how to do an elastical. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do an elastical, a flip flap, a Ronaldinho, whatever you call it. There's a few different names for it, but I wanna talk about how to do the skill and more importantly, when to actually do this type of skill because as I always talk about in my skill videos and I have to start out saying this, don't get caught up in flashy skills that look good in practice or look good by yourself, but they don't work in a game. This skill has a bit of flash, but it can also be effective. So if you master it in a match, you can do it in the right situations. So let's just talk about the basic version. I, I think it would be an outside touch to an inside touch. So there's two touches here, but to make it look really good and what you want is you're trying to turn those two touches into one touch. So I'm pushing the ball away with the outside. When I get to full extension, I'm trying to get it with the inside. I'm trying to slap it on the other side of the ball with the inside. I'm trying to shift him that way. And as he goes that way, my touch goes the other way. Okay, so that would be the first version. And again, a couple things to help you do this more effectively. So I'm trying to push it away and bring it back. The bend in the knees. If I'm doing this standing up like this, it's difficult for me to get back around the ball and bring it to where I want to go in the opposite direction. If I get my body more on top of it, I push it and then I can cut it. I'm on top of it. I'm going to have a better change of direction and I'm going to be able to get away from the defender easier. So just focus on getting on top of the ball more rather than up here and start slow, start slow. But the better you get, the quicker you want to make it. But a good place to start is just kind of tapping the ball back and forth and you'll make mistakes, come back. But building comfort, just kind of on one foot, inside, outside. And then over time, you're gonna have that a little quicker. So as I said in the beginning, there's a couple different ways you could do this. I believe this is elastico. I don't know if this is the same, but it's the same type of touch. It's a double touch. You're turning two touches into one. So I'll put this in the same video. This one, just like inside, outside, or outside, inside, it's the same outside, inside, inside, outside. Okay, but again, this is better if I'm on top of it, because even if I do have a bad touch, it doesn't work out how I want, just like that. At least I'm on top of the bowl. If I'm up here with my body positioning and I lose it, I can't get there quick enough. So with all your skills, with all your dribbling, just play a bit lower. And look where, that's a bad touch. Look where my body's ending up though. I'm out here outside of the bowl. I'm not on top of it like this, okay? Good. So is there another one? I mean, realistically, we used to mess around with this. And this is a trap, guys. You can get caught in doing all these fancy skills. They're fun to practice. But in the game, do they work? It's like a triple, triple elastical. One, two, three. So you're doing, you're combining those two into one. One, two, three. But again, if you're gonna do this, don't just do it on the spot, because that does nothing. He's gonna just stand there even though you did a bit, a good bit of skill, he's just gonna stand there and tackle you. You want a little more range on your touches to get him moving. But again, how, you gotta have a lot of confidence and good technique to actually do that in a game. Okay, so keep those in mind, keep the technique in mind. Let's talk about where to actually use this skill. So, Personally, I would not use this skill when you're running at someone. If you're in the midfield, first of all, be smart where you use your skills. 
yes, it's good that you can beat players all over the pitch, but it depends on the type of skill you use. For me, this is more of a standstill skill. I'm not gonna dribble at him with speed and try to do that touch. I mean, it's possible, but it's difficult. You're much more likely to beat someone if you're just using your speed to your advantage. Where I believe, and I'll try one more time. It's possible, but it's tough to do. Where I believe this is more valuable is when you receive the ball and maybe you're in the corner and now suddenly I'm at a standstill. I'm in this position here and I have to shift him because when we're both standing still, it's easy for him to defend me. If I'm running with speed and he's standing still, I have the advantage. But if we're both standing still, I have to do something to shift him. So that's where a move like that could be beneficial. So I would use it more in this situation, like a standstill over here, <clears throat> rather than running at speed. Okay guys, but a couple different ways to do this skill. And you see, I always like to practice with both feet, but whatever happens, whenever you make a skill, this part is good, but most of us will make this, will perform this good piece of technique and we even shift him. But after that, we don't get away. We're slow in our movement. Remember, technique is one thing, movement is another. So you're slow in your technique. You're here, you had him beat, but you didn't get away. So after every bit of skill, I wanna see quickly accelerate, change position. Even if you have that bad touch, if you have the bad touch and the skill didn't go how you wanted, but you were quick, then you're gonna get away from more players. So keep those ideas in mind. This is how I do an elastico. And I hope you found this video helpful. If you like this content, check out the Soccer Success Planner. You can download it for free. There's a link in the description below. And for advanced training, check out the Online Soccer Academy.